Hi everybody, welcome to the Improved Garage YouTube channel. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing a, well, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That helps me to do more things. Um, today, I'm going to be doing an A service on my uh, 2018 GLC 43 AMG. Now, realistically, this should be the same for any GLC, whether it's a 250, a 300, a 43, or a 63. Um, and anything from the year range of 2016 through 2021. Um, I have a 2018, obviously, and it is a 43. Um, there are a couple things that are AMG specific, so I'll mention those and call those out. Um, we're using a uh, Mercedes-Benz maintenance manual, um, which I printed one off the internet. There's, a, there's one inside your car. There should be one in the owner's manual pamphlet uh, stuff that's in the glove box. Um, but I downloaded one from the website so I can mark it up and it can get dirty and I don't have to care. So, um, what is due for my car right now is a service A. It is the second service A. So the car goes A, then B, then A, then B, then A, then B. Um, an A service is much less significant than a B service. Um, so we'll talk about the things that we need to do and then we'll uh, kind of go through them one by one. And um, I'll talk about the products that I had to purchase in order to do this. So I have this uh, package here from FCP Euro. Um, so there are kind of two places that I check out when I'm buying um, maintenance supplies for my Mercedes-Benz cars. Uh, one is FCP Euro and one is ECS Tuning. Um, they both have great websites. They both have good shipping. They both have good prices. Uh, for this particular vehicle, I did everything from FCP um, because it they have better availability, better prices. So I have two air filters. Uh, well, I'll take that back. I have two air filters that are the E1143L. I have one air filter that is the E3900LI. I have one air filter that is an E4932LC. I have an oil filter, Perflux, and then I have seven quarts of Liquamoly 5W40, and that is everything in the box. So, I will be honest with you, I'm going to do a little bit more than what the service calls for. Uh, but I'll talk about what the service calls for and we can kind of go through that together. So, my car has 18,000 miles on it. It is its second A service, which the person before me drove it very few miles. Uh, at, uh, normally, if you drove the maximum amount of miles that you can do in a service interval, you'd be at 30,000 miles right now. Um, so, we're going to start off with our uh, kind of checks going through all of those and then we will um, We'll move on from there. Alright, so first things first. Check illumination of the instrument cluster and interior lighting for correct function. Alright, so that's on. Footwell lights are on. That's on. Uh, map lights work. Rear lights work. Side lights work. Okay, so that's all good. Corn. That works. Check and correct headlamp setting, so we can see the lights are on, we can see that our high beams work, the reflection there in the Scion. Check trunk cargo department lighting for correct function, so we already looked back there. Um, check and correct windshield washer system fluid, I'll do that. Remember the windshield washer fluid needs to be invoiced separately. Check condition of exterior. I wash it every week. I know what it looks like. Check condition of windshield. I don't have any major cracks. A couple bug splatters. Check condition of wiper blades. They were recently changed. Okay, oil and filter change. So let's see what else I need to do inside the car. All right, so my brake life is good. Don't have a lip on my rotors. Those look good. My fronts look good as well as they should they only have 18,000 miles on them. my pads look good and truthfully you know these cars have pad wear sensors they're going to let you know when your brakes are are running out um, they're doing this 
to provide the ability to upsell services when you're in for service because they're assuming they're not going to see this car for a year. Um, all right, so what I've left is the dust filter, the activated charcoal dust filter, which is the inside one. I have the, um, which I'm not even supposed to do. That's a, that's a maintenance B item. I'm just going to do them anyway. Uh, the engine oil and filter change, and then all of these checks. So I've got seven quarts of liquid molly because that's what the car calls for. I've got an oil filter. I'm going to pump the oil out from through the top. If you were doing a drain from the bottom, like a historic oil filter or oil change, um, you would also want a drain plug and a drain plug gasket. I do have a drain plug and a drain plug gasket here that I keep on hand, but um, I'm going to pump everything from the top. Then uh, this is the cabin air filter that goes inside the car. Um, this is what they call a dust filter. It's a cabin air filter that goes outside the car. So there's a filter that air sucked through and then it goes into the blower motor and then it goes through this carbon filter that then distributes through the cabin. These are engine air filters. These aren't supposed to be done until, what was that, 50, I think it's 50,000 miles? Yeah, every 50,000 miles is when they're supposed to be done um, on the GLC. But in my opinion, they should just be done every service. They're not expensive. They're, and all of this stuff together was like, um, let me pull up the price. All right, so in total, I spent 148.14. Um, these engine air filters are 52 of that, so $26 a piece. So it's up to you if you want to do them every or every other. I just do them every single one. It's a $60,000 car. I don't think that makes sense to skimp on engine air filters. Um, So I unsnap the engine shroud, it just pulls up, pulls up here, pulls up here, and then there's little clips here to connect this in. Um, if your, your shroud would be different if you were in a 250 or a 300, it should just pull off. Uh, my car has two air filters. I believe that the 300 and the 250 only have one. It says on FCP Eurosight, two with AMG. So I'm assuming that's right, and that's because it's a V6, so there's two intakes, there's two air filters, and there's two intake plenums. Um, so I ran the car for a little bit just to get the temperature up. Uh, temperature is currently right around 120, um, which you don't need to be exact. It doesn't need to be high, super high or super low. Um, you know, normal operating temperature for an engine is like 160 to 180. Um, I'm going to be using this oil extractor, um, so it tends to flow a little bit better when you're running um, a little bit higher temperature. Okay, so I'm going to actually suck the oil out through the dipstick, just back here, using this pump. Now this car has a normal drain plug on it, just like every other car that you might be familiar with. Um, if I do this, then I don't have to remove all those plastic shrouds. I don't have to jack it up. It's actually a lot faster. Um, and I purchased this thing originally to do a transmission service, um, but it's been pretty useful. Okay. All right, so it's sucking oil out right now. We're just gonna let it run until it sucks all of the oil out of the car. Uh, it'll take a couple of minutes. It's gotta pull about six quarts out. Um, I was just above the min mark on the dipstick. I'm gonna put it you know, closer to the max mark after I fill it up. All right, so we finished pumping the oil out. I basically just pump until it stops pumping. Um, obviously, like I said, you could go below the car and you could remove the drain plug. Um, if you do remove the drain plug, you'll need a drain plug and a drain plug gasket. Those two things total about five bucks. Here's the drain plug. Here's the gasket. Um, so 
Next thing we want to do is we want to change the oil filter. So the oil filter on these cars is up above. Um, it's actually right here. It's got a black plastic cap on it, and that's where the oil filter goes. Um, so try to stick the tripod so you can see it. I'm going to grab an oil filter wrench. So because this has a plastic cap on it, um, I use a tool. Uh, Motive Tools makes this. It's an MX2323 is the part number. I got it from Amazon, and it's an oil filter wrench um, that's specifically designed to remove these plastic covers. Uh, like, you know, and because the cover is plastic, um, you just want to be careful with it and not use a pair of pliers or something that might crack it or screw up the threads or whatever. So loosen that up, pick this up, and we will remove our cap. And we've got a little bit of oil that's dripping out of it. Tip it up. Okay. So we can see, you know, the hole there where the oil filter goes in. And we'll just a little bit here on this AC line, so we'll just clean that up. All right. Now, so here is that oil filter cap that we removed. There's a little bit of oil on the outside of it, so we'll just kind of wipe that off. And then this just kind of unsnaps. Like that. And then that is your your used filter. So take that out. There shouldn't be a whole lot of oil in it because this sits upside down on top of the engine so it should drain as you're draining the car. Um, so the filter that was in here was an OE Mercedes. I bought this from a dealership so the car was maintained by the dealership. Um, so let's take a look at the part number on it. Mercedes-Benz Perflux, and it is a L394. So one of the things that you'll find is on FCP Euro and um, several other websites, they sell a Perflux and they also sell a Mercedes-Benz. The only difference is the box. Perflux makes the filter for Mercedes-Benz. This one is like two-thirds the price of the Mercedes one. So you just buy the Perflux, it makes more sense. Um, in the box, they give you a filter and they give you this O-ring. This O-ring is designed to replace this O-ring that's on the body. So you take that off, you replace it with the new one, like that. Just kind of rub it with my fingers to get a little bit of oil on it. And then wipe off this cover. And this goes in here like that and it snaps into place and it's kind of spring loaded so it just snaps in like that and it should spin and you know be free and then this goes inside the car so these are there's there's an o-ring here there's an o-ring here this one gets replaced with the filter this one gets replaced as part of the kit so put it in here upside down put it on hand tighten And then we can tighten it with our wrench. And there's a note on here, uh, 25 Newton meters. So just remember that it's plastic, so it's snug, like that, perfect. So that is now tight and our filter has been replaced. So we can take our, our old filter, put it in our box with our O-ring and we'll dispose of that later. Okay. So next, we want to add oil to the car. I have this. It is great. It's like a $25 funnel. If you have one of these cars or if you work on German cars, buy it. It's actually a Volkswagen specific. It's made by Schwaben. Uh, there's a part number, 029348SCH01A. So this fits Mercedes and Volkswagen. It will also fit BMW, um, 
but BMW has a four, a four pin, but you can just lock two of them. And then um, this loosens up, and this thread actually is Toyota. So you can use it on a Toyota as well, or I've used it on a Mazda even. Uh, so we take this here, it gets a little quarter turn, and it's tight. And it is an awesome, awesome, awesome funnel. We'll still stick a rag there just to be sure, but we shouldn't run into any problems with the opening that big. So I'm going to start off with the 5 liter bottle of Liquamoly. We'll open this up. Um, these are really cool because they have a spout on them, so they make them really easy to pour. Loosen up the cap, do this. I always start off with the 5 liter bottle first because I want this to be empty so that I can put my drain oil in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to start pouring. So at this point, I'm about four quarts in. So I'm going to let it settle for a minute, and then I'm going to check the level with my dipstick. And I should be maybe a little bit below the midline. So yes, I am a little bit below the midline. So we've put all five liters of oil in. Check our dipstick again. All right, so we are very near the max. We'll kind of check it twice. All right, so we're right at the max line, which is good. So let's remove our funnel, put our cap back on, and we might still add a little bit, but we'll we'll see. I'm, like I said, I'm right at the max line, um, but what we're going to do at the end is we're going to run the engine for a couple minutes, and that's going to um, fill up the oil filter and the reservoir and all that stuff that we just emptied out. So there's sometimes valleys and things that will hold a little bit of oil. All right, so while I'm here, let's do the air filters. There's an air filter here, an air filter here, there's an air filter under here, and then there's a cabin air filter inside. Like I said, the engine air filters aren't supposed to be done until 50,000 miles, so I'm doing them ahead of time. Um, so we'll start off with this one, it's the easiest. Um, so over here, we have our battery cover. There's these two little quarter turn screws. You just turn them so that they're facing this direction. Lift up like that, out towards you. And this is where the first filter is. So we've got this black plastic cover. There's a little tab on the back. So you just kind of squeeze the tab on the back. Like that like that, and then this lifts out. So this is the cabin air filter. And what we see is there's a little blower motor in there. And that blower motor is what feeds the vents inside. So you can see like this is pretty dirty. There's a bunch of crap stuck in it. So these are engine. So this is the uh, E3900LI part number. All right, so this goes in here like this. Snaps into place, and that's it. And the, so if you're looking at the side of it, 
it says airflow and it has an arrow like this. So you want the airflow arrow to be pointing up because what it's going to do is it's going to suck air in from here and pull it through the cabin. So this hooks on there, snaps into place like that, and that's in. Done. Good to go. Okay, so that's one done of four. Okay. Now, engine air filters. This is where our pads may diverge a little bit. If you are driving a four cylinder variant of this car, um, you won't have two. So, looks like I need a T20. It's actually a T25. So, we're going to loosen this up, these covers. Uh, I have one. three so I have four screws on my cover comes up like that pulls forward tips this way so here is our air filter and as you can see the dirty side is pretty pretty dirty. So, air for this guy is pretty interesting. Air flows in from here, comes up through the filter, and then gets sucked back down through these like venturis that are here and into the intake. So, that is pretty cool. So, I'll clean that out. And then I'm going to grab my shop vac and just kind of suck all the leaves and stuff out of there. All right. So this should be the E1143L. Both sides are the same. And again, like this is a Hanks filter. The factory ones are... Maley, uh, there's Hengst, Maley, and Man. They all make OE filters for Mercedes. Um, so these are OE spec filters. Uh, we'll get this stuck in place. And just like that. So this flips back over hooks in, and then it goes down like that, and then we'll tighten it into place. T25, I'm gonna do this front middle screw first, and then kind of work my way out from there. My wire came unclipped here, so just if yours does, make sure you clip it back in. <laughs> Lots of people are afraid of servicing these vehicles, so they go to the dealer and they pay 300 bucks for the service, which can be nice, especially if you've got some sort of warranty issue or something like that. Um, but in my opinion, they're, they're honestly really nice to work on. They're built very well. Um, they're, just, they're just great cars. So this is pretty friggin' dirty in my car. Like I mentioned, my car has 18,000 miles on it. I don't know if it was done when my car was certified, because this is a certified pre-owned, or it was a certified pre-owned. I bought it with 9,000 miles on it. So it might have been changed once before. These might be the original filters that shipped with the car. I, I don't know. The manual calls for it every 50, so I would assume that they haven't been changed, but also because the car was certified, that process is a little bit more rigorous than a standard service, so they might have just done it. I know that they put tires on it when they did it too, so 
that can be expensive. So pick this up. Again, pull it out of the way. Here's our filter. We got a bug in that one, that's cool. And grab our, our new filter and we'll just set it there. So if you take these little Venturi things out, make sure you put them back in. I didn't on my other side, so I'm gonna have to open that one back up and put it back in. Uh, so, put this in place. And then put this back on. and before I forget about it. Okay. So this. Snapped into place. That's where it belongs. So, our air filters are now done. Can wipe off our cover. All right, let's check our engine oil level again. Now that we've let it settle for a minute. still at the max line, which is good. You will remember when I was reading that I had to, um, I have to do a separate work order for the windshield washer fluid, but while I'm under here, I'll fill it up. Under here we'll check our other fluids so we have our coolant reservoirs there's two of them um, there's one here which has a level right on the side of the bottle so I'm, I'm good on that there's one here do not open when hot that level looks good We tighten our oil filter, we put our oil cover back on, our dipstick is back in. Um, the last two things would be... Brake fluid, which is right here. Next to our fuse box. So our brake fluid level looks good, I'm very near the max. 
So put this back on and then and that should be everything. So we'll put our cover back on our engine. We're going to start our car, let it run for a couple minutes. We'll get the cabin air filter changed and we'll continue through. So this is the cover, the underside of my cover, um, which may be different than yours, especially like if you don't have an AMG, it's not going to be this. So only a 43 will it match. That snaps in, this goes into place and then there's one, two, three, there's like five snaps. One, two, three, four, five. So that's now snapped into place. Clean off our cover. So we're in the passenger side footwell. And what we're concerned with is this bottom panel that needs to be removed. It's either a T15 or a T20. So we'll get it removed. It's one screw in the middle. Uh, so it is a T20. So one screw comes out. This unit comes down. And there's like snaps. A snap there and a snap here. Okay. Then you'll see that there's a light that's plugged in here. So we'll unplug that. Pull this down a little bit further. And then there's a temperature sensor over here for your climate control. So we just twist that to the side and pull it out, or we can unplug it either way. It's easier to just twist it to the side and pull it out, in my opinion. And then we can slide this whole thing forward and get it out of the way. So, if you look up in here, this box, this long box where my hand is, right here, that is the filter cover. So there's like these plastic guards on it, and what you want to do is you want to slide this one this way, and it'll kind of release the whole thing. So this cover comes out of the way, and here's our cabin air filter. Now take note of how that went in there. It's pitched to the right, okay? Mercedes-Benz, there's the part number. This should not be dirty because there's a pre-filter that's outside. So that's protecting this from getting dirty, being full of leaves and all kinds of crap. This is an activated carbon filter. So the point of this filter is to um, basically make your air smell clean. So here's our, our new one. This one has, it's like a plastic side on both sides. This is also a Hengst filter. Um, so this is going to go up in here like this. It's kind of hard to get up in there, but once you get it up in there, like it'll expand and fit the right way. So that goes in. Then this kind of goes, there's like a, a loop that it kind of sits around. I realize that it's not easy to see, but then this locks back into place and that's it. Door is on. Now we take our under cabin cover here, put that back up, make sure that you be careful with your temperature sensor that you don't screw it up. I would imagine that this stupid thing is probably expensive. So it goes in and it kind of quarter turns and the wire faces out of the back and then this plugs in and your light comes back on. And then This goes up, up like that. 
just make sure that it's clear of your mats. Um, your floor mat will get in the way. And then you kind of snap it into place with its two snaps where it belongs. It's back into place. Then we take our screw, single 20, put it in here. Tighten it up. So at this point, I have done my, my physical inspection. I have verified all of my lights work. I have uh, changed my oil. I changed my air filters, both the cabin air filter and the engine air filter. They recommend that you change the engine air filter at 50,000 miles, which I think is a little too long. Um, so I just did it now. And it's 50 bucks, just do it. Or do, maybe do one every service go left, right, go left, right, or something along those lines, but for 50 bucks. Taking this to the dealership and doing a service, they're supposed to be 299, there's usually a coupon, so it's like 249 to get an A service done. I'm into it for 140 bucks with replacing those filters, so I recommend just doing it. And I bought seven quarts of oil. I have two quarts over there that I didn't even open. It only took five to fill it up. So you might take a little bit more if you drop the drain plug. Uh, I don't think you'll get much though, to be honest with you. So I took about four and a half out. I put five in. And then the very last thing that we need to do is we need to clear the service light, the service interval light. So door shut, all doors shut on one time. You need to go to the trip menu, trip, and you need to be showing that screen, okay? And you're going to press the OK and the call answer button and hold them. And this screen is going to come up. So we've got vehicle data, brake pad replace, assist plus. So let's go to vehicle data. So here's some data about the vehicle. There's the battery, there's the amount of current draw, there's temperatures, hardware, software version, diagnostic versions. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can read about the car. Let's go back. Oh, what was that last thing? Then, all right. So we're gonna go down to Assist Plus. Switch on ignition to activate Exist Plus. So we're going to press it one more time. So we're going to go down to full service. OK. We're going to confirm service. Service performed. Yes. Cannot be undone. Confirm. Full service carried out. OK. Press it one more time. Back, back, home. Our workshop settings are still there, so let's shut the car off. Open the door. Okay, so this time I'm gonna start the car. And we see that we have no errors this time. So we can go down here and just check. Service, assist plus. Service B in 10,000 miles. So we have now officially reset our car. If you have a fancy scan tool, like even a Zurich ZR15, um, that can do service resets as well. So you can do it through the tool, but they make it easy for you to do it with your hands and kind of go through it. Get that out of the way. So there we are. I'm just gonna clean up my mess here and uh, call it a day. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe. And honestly, this is really easy to do. So I wouldn't be afraid of it. I've done the 300 as well. We have a SLC 300. It's the same as the GLC 300 from an engine perspective. Um, that one only has a single air filter. Very easy to do. Very easy. The cabin air filter is harder than anything else. So anyway, don't be afraid of the car. It's just a car. It was built by humans. Have a great day. Please subscribe.